Hello, dear friends. Welcome to Woke Wednesday. Give a few minutes for folks to check in. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Hi, B. Hi, friends. Welcome to Woke Wednesday. How is everybody feeling today? Hello, Kimberly. Hello, 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 jam down. Hello, hello, hello. Folks, let me tell you something. If I were to have an emoji for today, which I encourage you all to drop in the comment section about how I feel about Democrats, it would be just the giant shit, the giant turd, if you will, that is in the emoji. That's how I feel about Democrats right now. Um, the most ineffectual, lot of people that I am sad to be affiliated with today. That's how I feel. And you know, there there's like headline after headline that is saying Democrats fail to get voting rights done. Democrats have no plan B. And the only thing that I keep thinking to myself is what the fuck is wrong with you people? You had four fucking years to figure out a plan. Why are you only thinking about plan A, B, and C now when our republic is at stake? I, I just like, you know, and I posed this question yesterday uh, on Twitter and folks were like, well, you know, what's the solution? What's the solution? You should have been coming up with solutions the moment that Donald Trump put his hand on the fucking Bible in January of 2017 for inauguration. There should have been a strategic plan. There should have been a meeting of the minds that was happening from that day moving forward. How are we gonna secure our democracy? How are we gonna ensure that a criminal president doesn't ever get his hands or her hands inside of the Oval Office? What are we going to do to make sure that we create guidelines, right? That actually function, that what we understood under the Trump administration is that all we have are political norms. Did you guys know that? Did you know that there was nothing that was really written in stone? That everything that we have come to understand about our government is based on norms, which means that we are relying on good people to be good people. But when you are then faced with somebody that is a terrible person, like if you look up bad person, horrible American in the dictionary, you would see a picture of Donald Trump and then subsequent pictures of everybody in the Republican Party. We're relying on people to do the right thing when they have no consequences for doing the wrong thing. So tell me how then shaming people, which is all Democrats are good at, you know, is a good finger wag. Well, as Nancy Pelosi said, I guess I'll pray for him. Bitch, I don't need you to pray, right? I honestly don't. Like I need policy. So prayers don't actually fucking work because if they did, then every time that a Republican would offer up their thoughts and prayers after another mass shooting, then, you know, bullets would stop mid fucking air. But guess what? They don't, right? So save me your thoughts and prayers on you, the Republican party and on, you know, your willingness to work with them. So the title of today's Woke Wednesday is, is democracy dead? And honestly, you all know, if you follow me, you know my answer to that question. But I'm actually posing it to all of you and I want you to respond to me and to each other in the comment section. Do you think that our democracy is dead? Because folks, this is where we are right now. Let me just paint the picture for y'all. We have no recourse now following this failed measure by Democrats. Now, what was voted down yesterday? Not the actual bill, but the ability to even debate the bill, right? So what Democrats did was put together essentially an omnibus type of uh, bill that was included in there, the John, the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. It's not a standalone, okay? And what we learned over the course of the last couple of weeks is that this bill wasn't even intended to be a bill that would pass. It was more of a messaging document from Democrats where they knew that Republicans were not going to get on board, nor would they be able to get the 10 Republicans necessary 
right? In order to what? Have the work around the filibuster because the threshold is 60, right? We have 50 Democrats, right? And then you need 10 Republicans. Well, guess what? We couldn't get 10 Republicans to agree to have a commission to investigate the people that tried to kill them. Let that sink in for a minute. We couldn't get a bipartisan commission to have the folks that tried to lynch them investigate it. So you think that these folks now are gonna turn around and decide that you know what America needs to do more of? Vote. As we are seeing across almost, I think it's roughly 47 states now that have issued some of the most egregious and heinous anti-voting laws that are passing. Governor Abbott, who can't seem to keep the fucking lights on in the state of Texas, has decided that instead of working on his fucking energy grid, that he wants to use his time to ensure that there is no outside organizing that comes into the state of Texas like the Souls to the Polls or the Freedom Riders that we are seeing right now go cross country who just arrived in Washington, D.C. You don't want those outside people to try and come in to organize. So they are making it pretty much illegal for folks to do so, right? As well as, you know, illegal to eat food, drink water, like all of this bullshit that they are putting into these pieces of legislation in the hopes that black people and people of color will not be able to vote. They're going to purge tens of thousands of people from the from the rolls. They're going to make sure that the poll watchers are the most partisan of people. And the next move that Republicans are making is that all of the Trumpers are guess what office they're looking to run for Secretary of State. Now, what have we learned about the Secretary of State? Oh, they control elections. So what Republicans have decided that they are setting up is to make sure that any election, whether it be for dog catcher or the President of the United States and all the many of offices in between, that if people vote for a Democrat, they can take them to court or not even bother to take them to court, just you know, nullify the people's voice, right? And make the decision for themselves, as said Secretary of State, that, yeah, your vote doesn't count. So we know all of this, right? We knew all of this was happening prior to the 2020 election. So it's confusing to me that here we are when Republicans, folks, let's just understand, are operating in plain fucking sight. They're not doing anything undercover. As a matter of fact, folks are getting on television and saying, yes, we want these anti-voting measures because otherwise Republicans won't win. They say the quiet part out loud. So it's not as if there's a lot of sleuthing that is involved in trying to figure out what Republicans are up to because they're fucking telling you and have been telling you for the last four to five fucking years. And if you go back to the Obama era, we're telling you then when they said that they were going to make the first African-American president a one-term president, right? And all we are seeing and feeling right now is the backlash to that, right? Is Mitch McConnell's mealy mouth motherfucker saying that, well, we're not, I'm the Grim Reaper and we're never gonna get anything done. So then tell me, how we find ourselves as Democrats in this current predicament. And by predicament, I mean that we have roughly, oh, I don't know, maybe 12 months, probably less, for us to enjoy the spoils of a democracy that is dead. Why do I say that? Well, friends, we are halfway through 2021, 2022, November of 2022 is when we will have midterm elections. Democrats majority is pretty much a razor thin edge right now. Um, and basically, do you know what their campaign motto is at this moment? Is continue to vote for us. We don't get shit done, but we need more of us 
us in power in order to still not get shit done. It doesn't roll off the tongue. Do you know what I'm saying? Neither does their inability to actually get shit done. I'm just always just, I'm taken aback, folks. I'm taken aback by the fact that Chuck Schumer has been in office for what? One, 200 years now? And you would think that he knew the rules of the Senate like the back of his fucking hand and knows the way in which to utilize procedural bullshit in order to get things done that he needs to get done. But then, let me come to the motherfuckers that I literally, <sighs> I wish ill on, like I wish so ill on, Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin. I wish them to be unwell. And why do I say that and I mince no words about it? Because Kirsten Cinema found herself writing an op-ed over the weekend, talking about how and why she believes in the rules of the filibuster and not controlling or ensuring that our republic will stand for years and generations to come. That she wanted to talk about, essentially, and let me break it down for you so that you don't waste your energy and your eyesight reading her nonsense. But essentially, what it is that Kristen Cinema is saying is that she is operating from a place of fear that she is so concerned about what Republicans may or may not do when they get back in power. So she doesn't want to abandon this thing called the filibuster that doesn't exist in our fucking constitution, right? Um, that is just a mechanism for control. So here it is. How about you not fucking worry about what's going to happen when you lose power? How about you wield power when you have it? Right? How about, just like in life, all of the spiritual guides and folks will tell you, do not operate from a place of scarcity. Do not operate from a place of lack. Come to the table, not from a reactionary position, but from a position of power. So the people went out in the midst of a motherfucking pandemic to give you all of the power for then for you to turn around and then tell us that, well, I think that we should collaborate. That's what that bitch said in her op-ed. She wanted to talk about how all of these great things come about by collaborating, right, and cooperation with the other party. And I am so fucking confused because I'm like, Kirsten, you came in to the Senate in 2018 after serving, what, three terms in the House of Representatives, right? So that's two, four, six years, right? So basically, your entire understanding of Congress comes through the obstructionism that was exhibited under Mitch McConnell's power to make sure that Democrats got nothing done during the Obama years, during his last term, except a bunch of executive fucking orders, which we see doesn't actually fucking stick, right? Executive orders don't stick. Policy does. And so here now we have ourselves in this place where this party has shown you over the course of your career, cinema, exactly who they are, where they are, and what they are interested in doing. So when you talk about waving your finger about bipartisanship, tell me when and where Democrats have said to Republicans, we have absolute power and don't give a fuck about what you think. Tell me when and where Democrats have said or rolled out, I don't know, a series of pieces of legislation that have ensured that the American people can't access the fucking ballot that people died for. Tell me when that has happened. So when her and Manchin and the other ones that are too fucking shit, chicken shit to say their part out loud, because there are other Democrats, folks. We only have two targets because they're the two boldest ones. But there are other Democrats who don't want to get rid of the filibuster because they are operating from a place of powerlessness, right? I don't think that Republicans sit around for all of the horrific, cruel, things that they do. They don't sit around wondering, well, how are Democrats going to respond? They don't give a fuck, right? That is evident. They care about two things, shareholders and CEOs, the people that are filling their fucking coffers, right? So if the people, Democrats, that are funding your fucking campaigns are saying to you, we need to get this shit done. Don't come back to me talking about, 
Oh, I don't know what to do, you know, because Republicans don't want to work with us. That is not a way to access more power. Let me tell you that just straight up. You're not going to come back to the American people in 2022 and tell them that they need to vote more, right? That we need more Democrats when they gave you the majority and you did dick with it. Because why should you have power? This is why people say cynical shit like, well, it doesn't matter which party is in control. You and I know that it matters which party is in control, right? Because there's one party that puts children in cages. There's one party that uses the military and the police force like it is a weapon against their own people that they do not like. There is one party that, you know, was spying on their political enemies using the Department of Justice. There is one party that doesn't believe in the Constitution, the Emoluments Clause, any of it, right? We know that to be true. But if your reaction to all of those things is, you know what we should do? We should have drinks and talk about where we can compromise. What? Like we need a summit with terrorists? Because that's what you're asking for and that's why it sounds fucking crazy, right? So when you have Kirsten Cinema get up in front of cameras and say that she will not be held hostage by liberal views, if you think that people in America having the ability to vote is a liberal view, bitch, take the D from behind your name because you are not a Democrat. And I hope that folks that are listening right now, if you live in Arizona, that you vote her the fuck out, right? Because I don't want fake Democrats. And everybody keeps telling me, Danielle, if we get rid of Manchin, if we get rid of Sinna, then Mitch McConnell still has all the power. Tell me how it's different than what happened yesterday. How is it different? Because Mitch McConnell is still operating like he is the fucking leader of the Senate and he is not. Right? And all I'm hearing is a bunch of excuses why we can't get shit done. Because Republicans won't come to the table. Or how about this? Where are the fucking consequences for the mansions and the cinemas of the world? Where are the consequences for that? Because here's the thing. Whether it is right or wrong, Republicans, you ain't in line you get Liz Cheney the fuck out, right? You lose your position of power when you no longer decide whether it's right or wrong to go along with what the rest of the group is doing. This is some fraternal sorority bullshit, okay? That is, that is what makes up Congress. So here's the thing. You cannot have wolves in sheep's clothing, right? In conference with you all, who are then actively working against you. You need to kick them the fuck out and strip them of their power. Because if that is going to be what sends a message rather than, oh, I don't know, the people of West Virginia being able to dictate what we do in the rest of the country. When I told you all last week, what the fuck does West Virginia offer? Not a fucking thing, right? But you have Joe Manchin is the most powerful man right now in the Senate, representing a state, folks, that doesn't even have the population of one of the boroughs of New York City. Miss me with the bullshit. Yes, they offer colon cancer, Gina. That is exactly right. So here we are. Here we are, dear friends, with but a couple of real months to enjoy our democracy while it lasts. Because Democrats have ensured that we are collectively, let's say it together, fucked. Because without a federal voting rights bill that would then circumvent how the Supreme Court fucked us and with the Shelby case eight years ago, which is why we are here, if they are not going to come back to the table in the few months that we have left in order to get things done and get their party in line, then midterms, 2024, none of it fucking matters. You don't need to go out and vote because we all know who's going to win. And it won't matter how many people are out because who will control the votes? Who will control the voting, the vote count? Where will it get kicked to? Maybe one of the 300 judges that Mitch McConnell put in power. 
Maybe it'll get kicked back up to the Supreme Court circa 2000, and we know who sits there. So, folks, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad and worse news on this good Wednesday, but if literally this Democrat-controlled Senate takes zero action on voting rights, we are going to cease to live in a democracy because you will have allowed for the hundreds of anti-voting rights bills to stand. You will have allowed the secretaries of state to dictate what it is they think that the people want and not the people actually voting. And then do you know what happens, folks? Do you know what begins to build? Hopelessness. Hopelessness begins to build. And when the people feel like they have no effect and can have no effect and voice on the country that they live in, then those that are in power continue to win and run roughshod all over them, right? Visit some places that don't have democracies. There is a sadness behind those people's eyes, right? Because it doesn't matter what it is that they do and work and how they move, right? They're just pawns in a game where rich people get to move them around the table, where crooked politicians get to move them. They have these elections, but they're not real elections, right? Hopelessness is the fucking goal here. And the fact is, I'm gonna, I will be ending early today because I have, I'm have the wonderful pleasure of joining uh, Lesbian 2 Tech uh, not in real life Pride Summit, and I'm going to be interviewing the fabulous Corinne Jean Pierre in but a couple of minutes. But what I will say, folks, is this um, hopelessness is the goal, cruelty is the mission, right? And Democrats are still operating from this space where it's the early 20th century, and somehow. There is, oh, I don't know, um, a connectedness, a community, a shared belief in values of democracy, of our constitution, of rules, of law. None of those things are true. Not one of them. We don't have a two-party political system. We have one party that is weak as fuck. And then we have a group of domestic terrorists that are growing power each and every day. I want to end with this today. Right now on Capitol Hill, there's a protest that is taking place led by Reverend William Barber, who currently, before I got on, is being processed by Capitol Police, right? Arrested, processed by the Capitol Police. Um, who had told him and other protesters that they needed to get out of the way and they needed to move and, you know, and so now they're being processed. William Barber, right, Poor People's Campaign, has been working for equity and justice for God only knows how long. They're processing him right now. Ask me how many fucking insurrectionists were processed on 1-6. How many of those motherfuckers ended up in somebody's zip tie? Hmm? How many of their names were taken? How many of them were processed? Oh, that's right. None of them. So here's what we know to be true. Do you know what is consistent in America? White supremacy and double standards. That is what is consistent. You know what else is consistent? The disappointment that is the Democratic Party. I want to believe that we can have change. I want to believe that change is going to happen. But, you know, folks, the only thing that we can change is our reaction, how we show up and what we do. Because these people, mm -mm, they show you every day who they are. And they're the fucking worst. That is it for me today, folks. I'm hopping off but a few minutes early. If you want more Woke AF, then hit me up on Patreon, patreon.com slash Woke AF and subscribe. It is just $5 a month to get five shows, hour-long shows each and every week. 
um, support independent black queer voices that are unapologetic in their truth. Appreciate each and every one of you. Share, share, share. You know that I post this right after I hang up with all of you. Again, hit me up on patreon.com slash woke AF. As always, power to the people and to all the people power. Get woke and stay woke as fuck. Until next week.